All right, thank you for joining us here. It's the D18 After Party. What, what? Uh, great show, and let's just get right to it and introduce our uh, panelists. Uh, from Independence Guam, we have Victoria Lola Leon Guerrero uh, from the Guam Legislature. I mean, this is a, a guy who's worked on so many different uh, campaigns, uh, Mr. Ryan St. Nicholas, and the original pro marijuana candidate, Dr. Chris Dombrowski. Yes. Thank you. Uh, public Health. Uh, you know, my uh, partner here, Sabrina Salas Mantanani, uh, of course, the KUM News team, and Wow, uh, just uh, what an entertaining group of candidates we had tonight. A little something for everybody, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has like, a lot mm -hmm. of enthusiasm. <laughs> right, yeah. Definitely. Senator, uh, Mr. Parkinson has a lot of enthusiasm. But I've been an activist for 18 years. Right. Started in 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, actually started in 1998 by taking classes at UOG with Dr. Judy Guthridge. Dr. Yeah. Judy Guthridge was the one who got me to run for senator started the Chamorro Association for the Legalization of Medical Marijuana. We Calm. even marched in the uh, Liberation Parade. When I hear all this, it, it's nice to hear, but it's not really going to change anything. The governor, Eddie Bazacalvo, was the one who submitted a bill to legalize the personal use of cannabis right. last year. He then went to Washington, D.C., came back, and pulled it. For whatever reason, I don't think anything was given. What I could do right now is to ask Eddie Bazacalva right now to resubmit that bill and keep it simple so this election can focus on the real right. issues yeah. instead of something that he's already promoted. I've been on this island for 23 years. The Calvo family, Eddie Bazacalvo, Paul Calvo, Joey Calvo, Big John Calvo, have all been so kind to me with their hospitality. And I would ask the governor to please resubmit that bill so we can focus on the real issues on this island. You know, and I think that uh, Will Parkinson really um, branded himself as that guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, with medicinal marijuana taking years, I mean, what are we going on, like five, six years? Seems like 10 uh, years. Uh, he, he came out hard and he said, I'm the guy, legalized marijuana. Ryan, was that, well, was that a good move? Well, uh, back to what he was saying about the governor pulling uh, back his legislation, uh, I believe at the time it was the U.S. Attorney General that said he wasn't going to recognize it right. in any state. So that's why I believe the governor kind of like, you know, pulled back his legislation. But on, for Will, I mean, uh, Parkinson to come out and say he's the guy, hey, very commendable and everything. But for me, I believe that medicinal marijuana is a good thing. I believe that recreational is it good for good for the taxes, but at the same time, we haven't even handled the uh, the medicinal marijuana yet. You know, and for how many years it's been legalized, and it's kind of like, you know, who was the director for public health again? What's his name? Gillum. Yeah. yeah I mean, Leo he went out to Arizona. You know, I believe he. You know, he went to all these places and everything, try to get up all the. You know how how the states are setting up and everything, and then he comes back and he says. I'm not for it. Uh, I don't want to do it. If you guys are gonna, if you guys right. are gonna force this on me, I'm right. gonna retire. So all that money going out to do the studies and trying to bring back what the states are doing, mm -hmm. is, I would say before we even get into the uh, recreational part, we really have to take care of the medicinal right. that's law right now. That in the time that we've spent trying to research how we should mm -hmm. implement medical marijuana, there are states that have. Uh, passed and succeeded in, mm. in legalizing marijuana right. and have set a lot of precedent yeah. and are, are booming in terms of economics. Yeah, I, th I, I agree with Victoria. I agree with uh, Will Parkinson. I say, you know what, medicinal marijuana, uh, it's tangled in red tape and nothing grows in mm. red tape. Let's just move ahead and, and legalize it for recreational mm. use. I mean, uh, what did he say is the elusive obvious? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How so, can the obvious not be obvious? <laughs> and, and I think of the candidates uh, tonight, um, wow, I mean, Will Parkinson kind of. I gotta say, he kind of stole the show. Yeah, I mean, he even actually looked in the camera. <laughs> and, and, and the way he, he uh, kind of called out uh, Will. Yeah. One of the yeah. things that I learned running for senator in 2000, 2002, is that society doesn't change because the evidence is so overwhelming mm. or the facts are in your face. Mm. Society changes because the kids grow up with those ideas mm. and the older generation dies off. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, you're right. And I think we're at that point. I think, uh, let's look at like five, six years ago, and I really don't want to turn this into the marijuana hour, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> five to six years ago, the attitude, uh, generally speaking, on marijuana was a lot less liberal than it is now. And when you have, you know, uh, states and, you know, the mm -hmm. USA legalizing full blown recreational marijuana, yeah, it, I think it really it, pushes the, the dialogue. It's, it's socially acceptable nowadays. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've lived in uh, Seattle for about five years and everything, and I've seen, working in the medical field, I've seen the medicinal part too as well and how it does help. The cancer patient has no appetite, you know. They, you know, they give him the injections and then, you know, he starts eating and everything. So there is, you know, proof that it does work. Yeah, on, on, on the recreational <laughs> side, there is, I believe there's one country in, in Europe where drugs was really at a rampant and when they legalized it, Uses everything drops. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everything Portugal. drops. Crime, yeah. Right. Portugal yeah. did that. Yeah. Right. And so there, there is, there is, there is that positive with, that comes with legalizing the recreational side. Right. And then, of Problem course, the taxes. medicinal cannabis, mm -hmm. it's, it sets a bad precedence mm -hmm. for every other drug down the road. Mm -hmm. We never had to do this for any other medications that I prescribe mm -hmm. right. in medicine. Right. So all of a sudden, you have the people making the decision on clinical pharmacology. Mm -hmm. So there is a negative aspect to it. Ideally, drug control policy should be dictated by the National Institutes of Health mm -hmm. and the National Academies of Scientists. We shouldn't be allowing politicians who have no right. training yeah. in clinical yeah. pharmacology right. or basic medical science telling what a doctor can or cannot prescribe to his patients. Yeah. And you know, Doc, uh, to your credit, I mean, you've been saying these things for 20 years. Uh, 20 years ago, they sounded completely nutso. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. people were like, he's wacky, what the heck? But nowadays, it's, I feel like it's, it's mm -hmm. common. You're my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> let's, talk, yeah. I want, let's talk about Will Castro. I mean, this guy is, uh, he worked hard to get in there. I mean, he ran, I'm, I don't even know how many times. I think he ran the, the first one, he did make it, second one he did, so this will be his third run. Right, now. yeah. So, I feel like he yeah. ran more for some reason. Walmart? He's just always yeah. been around, right? Yeah. I don't know, there's two wheels up in I want to say he ran Democrat, then he ran Republican. Yes, he did. And I know he, and he has a history of working with like Angel Senator yeah. Angel Santos, right. yeah. Speaker Juan Paz. Right. So he's been working in the legislature, and mostly with Democrats. So right. I was surprised that he ran Republican. I was too, but I think that uh, he is one of these Republicans that seems, at least on some things, like a Democrat. Almost like I mean, I'm not sure Fernando Estevez would agree with this statement, mm -hmm. but. And the way that Fernando Esteves is, is liberal and uh, a lot of things, yeah. uh, you know, Senator Will Moderate Castro. conservative. Right. <laughs> he could be <laughs> liberal. And especially, you know, with his, his uh, track record with Angel Santos. I mean, I was pretty surprised to hear uh, Senator Will Castro say that he supported statehood because yeah. I thought he was yeah. more yeah. of a, a radical, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I mean, the case in point would be look at uh, Harold Cruz, who's running on a Republican ticket, too, right. as well. And he had worked with Angel, too, as well. So... It seems like uh, you know the first tribe they don't do with Democrats, and even uh, mm -hmm. Senator, former Senator Jess Lahan did it. He ran as a Democrat, didn't do, it, he didn't make it, so he you know he chose to run as a Republican, and then he made it. So I think it's just a little bit strategy, you know. It's like right. okay, I guess the Democrats didn't like me, so I'm going to go to Republicans, and then let's see how that you know now works out from there. Supporting yeah. Democrats, so and it's pretty but, crowded on the Democrat side anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. 21, I think, yeah. to 18. What did you think, uh, Vicky, about his statements? Well, I mean, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Parkinson that, you know, statehood ultimately is a misnomer, right? Essentially, what, what is the UN recognized status would be full incorporation and ultimately it'd be up to Congress to determine what that would look like. And, you know, looking at Puerto Rico and looking at even just the definition of an unincorporated territory, the insular cases define very clearly that we are unincorporated territories, meaning we are not on the path to statehood. So mm -hmm. Congress would never actually grant statehood. Um, and I think that, you know, to say that he's not a gambler and he would bank on statehood was maybe the wrong preface for what he was really trying to say, which is thinking how he could leverage the federal government to be able to benefit not just Guam, but the region. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we return back to our previous conversation and even to some of the suggestions that were made tonight, a lot of the greatest obstacles are Guam's unincorporated territory status. So, of course, the governor withdrew the bill after a federal trip because, mm -hmm. um, you know, federally, uh, marijuana is still illegal. Yeah. Guam mm -hmm. is such a small community 
be it would and be there was a lot of blowback down. from GVB too. GVB said, you know, we're a family destination, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that that was part of it. Um, but that lacks imagination because yeah, it could actually yeah. be used mm -hmm. for tourism um, yeah. or even other industries like health sure. industries. So, you know, the thing here is ultimately that is that. Um, granted, the candidates had 30 seconds, but I was looking for more imagination, more practical, hands-on solutions. So, you know, I mean, things that uh, Senator Castro said about expanding our economies, tapping into the region, looking into fishing as an industry, these are really important things. But then you look at the Marine Monument, and you look at the limitations that that causes, again, mm. the hindrance of the federal government, right, or you right, look right. at defense yeah. interests that yeah. come in the way. So mm. in order for us to really get at the heart of how Guam expands its economy or enters new, um, you know, Know, new industries through the legalization of marijuana, we'd have to again return to the issue of political status. Well, mm. how do we gain more political voice? How do we gain more political power? I think Will just said that just to, to kind of just kiss up to a certain you know, group <laughs> yeah. of people. I feel like people say statehood. I mean, it's impossible. We're never going to get it, but it sure sounds good. I, and I it think sounds safe, safe and it caters to a certain if if you group. look at the history uh when the united states took over they took over the philippines you know spoils of war puerto rico guam and whatnot remember the philippines fought for their independence and at the same time they uh, the philippines actually wanted to be incorporated with the u.s and and of course the way they the, the u.s looked at guam was they were part of the philippines too as well but back then there were a lot of, of course, there were no minorities inside Congress and the Senate, and you know, a lot of the Southern people did not want, you know, at the time, I think at the time, the population for the Philippines was over about 30 million, and that could have made a difference in the face of who will be the next president. Right. right. You know, so they didn't want to incorporate it. So back to what uh, Lola was saying over here, it's like, hey, you know what, we, you know, we can't. That 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 option has been dead long gone. Which was kind of ignorant of Senator Castro. I mean, he's a senator. He should know. I mean, he talks a really good game. I was kind of disappointed with that with answer. I mean, no disrespect to people who support statehood, but, uh, you know, even more uh, ignorant was uh, oh, no, Jeff Wheaton no. yeah. saying uh, status quo. Yeah. I mean, have you even done your homework, guy? <laughs> it goes back to everything no. she said. Yeah. 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 I think the status quo saying that Guam is the best place in the world and we're rich and we're doing well, but then we talk about the deficit or we talk about yeah. the fact that our poverty rate is 50% higher than the U.S. or our rape rate is double the U.S. or, mm. you know, you look at all of these statistics that really show that the quality of life here is not what it could be and what it should be. And all a lot of the things like the drug abuse that was talked about tonight, um, domestic violence, sexual violence happening in our community, these are all symptoms of colonization mm -hmm. that are similar in other colonized places in the world. And you know, you don't say that then status quo, we're the best place on earth, everybody's so happy, yet you have all of these problems happening in the community. Um, and then of course people will say, well, look at the government, it's so corrupt and we are so in debt, but it's again, because we haven't really had the opportunity to fully grow, right? Mm -hmm. Being an unincorporated territory, you're kind of held stagnant. You're, you're not allowed to like grow so much that you're no longer dependent on mm -hmm. your colonizer. Right. And so, so, so that's why I think Will Parkinson really, uh, on that question, uh, I gotta say he took home uh, the W, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and I'm pretty sure you were really happy that he said uh, he would push for independence, but of uh, the three answers we got, I mean, two of them were kind of just X's, and so, mm. you know, by default, I guess he kind of took it. What do you think, Dr. Nebraska? I haven't really... I was born in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and if you look at, when I was there, in grade school, they used to take us on bus trips to the Constitution Hall, the Liberty Bell, and if you look at the origins of the Constitution, we stole a lot of stuff from the Native American Indians. Mm. If you look at the dollar bill, all those symbols were stolen from the Native Americans. Part of the Constitution was stolen from the Iroquois uh, Confederacy, mm -hmm. which was a group of 12 or 13 uh, tribes on the East Coast. So when I hear about this independence issue, I'm all for it because what we did to the Native Americans was despicable. Mm -hmm. And I can understand where the Chamorros are coming from. Mm -hmm. And if they wanted their freedom and I would have to take my passport and go elsewhere, I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. If that's no one, no one where, if that's says where you they have want to, do to go. Yeah. But people ask that, would you right, give up your right, passport? Right, right. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't give up my passport, but yeah. 
uh, there's got to be some way we can coexist. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do and it. They at do the same it. time, yeah. give you your freedom, your freedom of choice of how you want to live your lives. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, definitely. And and there are many independent nations that maintain dual citizenship. There are many different kinds of agreements that we can make with the United States. The relationship. Would, the idea here is that the relationship is flawed and imbalanced, and so a lot of people really assume that independence means surrendering your passport or yeah. kicking out bases, but independence could mean having a status of forces agreement in which we actually economically yeah. benefit right. in I, I, those bases. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, the, the U.S. Has, has invested in Guam for so long since... They're not they going anywhere. Here. They're not going anywhere. Nowhere. I mean, they always brag about the you know, strategic Kick position that we have here, you know, on the hot spots on the, uh, you know, on the Asian countries. So if we were to maintain independence, it's just, you know, hey, let's, let's, let's get into, you know, an agreement. You guys can use it. You guys got to pay for it. Right. Simple I mean, I don't Something know. Something that they're not doing now right now. I don't know if I like being the tip of the spear because the tip of the spear gets stabbed into things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, and then, yeah, and so, but without any say, then you're just forced to be mm, that, right? Yeah. But how do you negotiate something that doesn't get you stabbed, right? Mm. Simon Sanchez, what do you guys think of that question and the answer? The perennial, so oh, gosh, uh, that problem. And I remember doing talk shows with uh, Tony Blas early uh, within 2000s, early 2000s, and same you know, issue. Same issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's you know, and I was very critical with our leaders back then. You know, like you guys aren't doing anything. And we'll said it right. It is it, it is a, a issue where it comes down to procurement. Mm -hmm. um, I go back to what Will uh, Parkinson said. If it, if that's the case, then let's kill it, start from scratch, and and build it from there, uh, and try to like keep out the issues of companies dueling for, for the actual contract. Mm -hmm. uh, my thing is, you can only protest once, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and your protest better have some, you know, meat right, in it right, before right. you even bring it up. I mean, who wasn't going around saying Crytek, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I think that the Cortec lease for Tizen is a big part of the problem. It's a lot of money towards one, renting one school right, and right. the administrative buildings for GDOE, that if you really did the math of the millions of dollars being spent over mm. the 30 years of that lease, we could have built several new high schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know Simon Sanchez is is the issue now, but what happens as GW continues to dilapidate? Yeah, so I mean this it, uh, all these schools are only getting older, and you know, uh, hey, JFK didn't take so long. Yeah. What, what was yeah. the secret there? Maybe yeah. we need to look at what happened with JFK. Yeah, the kids were really protesting. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for JFK, and I mean the Simon Sanchez high school kids were as well, but I think the JFK students made a lot more, mm -hmm. a lot more not noise. And their alumni, and it was a big yeah. community right. issue. Right. But yeah, I think that kind of showed Mr. Wheaton's weakness too, in terms of how in touch he is with the community, because he's like, I kind of don't really know about this, but the original yeah. legislation was introduced years ago, and right. It's, right. it's a constant reoccurring issue. So I believe if you're running for senator on an issue like education, that's that yeah, that you really have you have to him. be able to speak yeah. to something like what that. What was his issue though? I didn't really uh, come away from watching. Uh, the three candidates with a better understanding of, of where they stand, why Jeff Wheaton's even running for senator. Right. I mean, we'll, and we'll go down yeah. the line and focus on each of the candidates. But in Jeff's case, uh, Doc, what was your takeaway? How much? <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Light a candle. Light nice a candle. Guy. <laughs> nice guy. Yeah. Well, I took away a shout out to the Department of Public Health and Social Services. <laughs> These nurses gave me a baby shower last Tuesday. Oh. My wife is due August 30th. And to have a guy get a baby shower just blew my mind. <laughs> right. And it brought everything home that I'm about to have. Uh, we're about to have a child. So I just want to throw that out. And thank mm. What's that got to do with Jeff Wheaton? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> thank you. It, it, I guess I mean, I that's what he's trying to say about Jeff Wheaton. He didn't right. take anything away. So I'll talk yeah, about my I baby. Did. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did. Yeah, no, no, no. Whatever. Ryan, I'm do my home. Yeah, uh, Jeff, You've been uh, in this a long time. nice hat. Uh, <laughs> gosh, what can I say? Um, in, in some of the things that he did say, I, I, I kind of understood where he was coming from. But uh, on the main tough issues and, and Crystal asked a lot of tough questions um, and even even the, the the people sending it in their questions uh, I, I think Jeff uh, you know I, being very critical at one point in time doing radio here uh, it's 
it's it's a harder deal now to become a senator. And once you become a senator, whatever, because granted, everybody wants to do good. Everybody has great ideas, but right. your great ideas are not going to amount to anything mm -hmm. if you cannot convince fourteen other people that your ideas are good. Right. And from what he showed me right there, I mean, I don't think he has, you know, in my opinion. There are no ideas. messiahs yeah. in politics, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a matter of working together with the group that you have toward a common goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you've got to reach across the aisle. And then a lot of it's just the context mm -hmm. of the times yeah. mm -hmm. of what's going on. And, uh, it's, it's a big difference from 18 years ago. When yeah. we were doing the, uh, the parade with the Chamorro Association for Legalization of Medical, Medical Marijuana, people were throwing joints at us <laughs> into the street. <laughs> Ben, ben Guerrero, the Rastafarian, wow. was going around running and p picking them up. Up until we got to the grandstand, every, it was 100% positive. Once we got to the grandstand, Guterres was the governor at the time. Once we got to the grandstand where all the military people were, they just, they just gave us shade. Mm. They just booed us royally. Wow. And it was a real eye-opener. Right. You know, the people wanted it. But the people in power or the people who fought for our freedom didn't know what freedom was. Mm -hmm. Well, the people still want it, and the people in power just pretend like they want it, it seems. I want yeah. to ask, uh, Victoria, your takeaway. Well, I mean, I think it's sort of what he's saying in that <laughs> metaphor is sort of Guam is a really intricate and unique place. And to kind of just assume that everything is great as it is and not be able to speak to issues that really matter to the community, um, you know, that's going to make it really difficult in a political campaign. You've really got to understand the people that you're serving. And, and I feel like, Chris, I, I don't really know what he was really running for. Mm -hmm. Like what, you know, he didn't really talk about much of his connection to Guam. I mean, the most personal thing I got was that he had a niece who graduated from Sanchez, Sanchez and yeah. did well in college. college. But, yeah. you know, really what... Um, what you really need to be able to understand is that, you know, you can't just assume that, you know, business interests are what matter most to everybody or, mm -hmm. you know, even the, the answer on the part time legislature, just like it's a great idea. Let's go right, part time. Right, right. But again, you know, if you're running for senator, you really have to understand the position that you're you're going to assume. And this is uh, and also the people. I mean, can you imagine him going up to Danana asking mm -hmm. for a vote? What like, is what it, but you know, Ryan? I mean, Tanana is only going to be around for so many more elections. So yeah. the dynamics of, of how and who gets elected, I think we're looking at in the next year, uh, ten years, it's really going to change. But I think with Jeff, uh, looking at him, I kind of just assumed uh, old white guy, you know, cookie mm -hmm. cutter conservative type, and mm -hmm. I didn't even hear that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, his hat had more personality. Than <laughs> <him>. <laughs> I know he said he said that you know he. he He's never ran for public office. Right. He's never even ran for student council. Yeah. He's not taking any any donations. And that's admirable, you yeah, know, for anybody you want to throw in their name, you know, uh, you know, on the ballot and everything. But at the same time, you really have. I mean, again, people go in there with a platform. People go in with an idea, yeah. you know, that they want to, you know, push through. I didn't get any ideas from it. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not going to run with, with campaigning or with right. donations, yeah. which is admirable, mm -hmm. then you've really got to have something you stand for. Yeah. That people are like, yeah. I know that, like I saw his truck in the, the parking lot with yeah. the big sign, but I didn't recognize him. So yeah. you have to be recognizable as having stood for something. So mm -hmm. people are like, yeah, I don't need to see 50 billboards on yeah. my drive to work, I know but Jeff what do you hat. stand yeah. for? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, it, it is compelling because you know, I follow politics closely and I've seen him drive around in his truck and it did. It made me, made me wonder, like, what's this guy about? Why is he running? Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't seem like your typical candidate. But, you know, at the end of the day, maybe TV just wasn't his... Uh, mm -hmm. Him, you know, how about Will Castro, Senator Will Castro? Uh, man, I, I I work with that guy daily, and uh, I see him. You know, I see him. He has yeah, he has some good ideas. He has a lot of good intentions, and I believe that everybody running has good intentions. But at the same time, you have to get over the hump of trying to convince 14 other people that your ideas are 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 the best for the island. And if you can do that, and I think Will has that that knack for it to actually reach across the aisle and work with Statistically, though, he uh, was one of the senators with the fewest uh, amount the fewest of bills passed. Ones. You know, and, and, and I, would, I would venture to say that, you know, in his defense, he'll probably say, because I'm a Republican right. and, you know, yeah. it's a majority yeah. of yeah, Democrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, again, if you have the knack to actually reach out and, you know, work with the Democrats, you know, a lot, as, as well as working with, you know, people within your party, I think, you know, uh, if, if you have that, that, 
that knack for it, then you can do it. And I, 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 I see him. I think he's genuine. Um, you know, some of his ideas are way out there. Uh, you mean like the <laughs> regional prison? Yeah, well, you know, uh, you. Uh, how about use the island that the military took away for target practice? Turn that into a prison. <laughs> Let them do their target practice. Let them do their target practice. <laughs> uh, Victoria, your thoughts on Senator Will Castro? Well, I mean, I think if we look at like the regional pr prison, for example, I think he has spent a lot of time, especially this year, on building relationships with the region, which yeah. I think is incredibly mm -hmm. important and something that not enough candidates pay attention to and should, because right, right now, like this whole military buildup isn't a Guam buildup, it's Marianas Y. Mm -hmm. And the military is seeing us as one, but we're not working as one, so we're not leveraging it and we're, and we're not able to protect our natural resources and we're not able to even prevent things that could be really destructive for us as a whole. But if we were collaborating more and we were a force, then that would be something different. But when you look at something like an issue like, okay, so, so we need regional partnership and we can use it economically and we can use it strategically. But when we look at an issue like our prisons, we should learn from each other. We should recognize that like we, especially how he included like the FSM, that many people from the FSM are in prison here. Um, and if we're just sort of deporting them back to the FSM without a plan, there does need to be regional partnership. But we can't all send everybody to one prison on another island. Right, I think right. we need to look at, in Guam particularly, the, what's plaguing DOC is it's overcrowded. They yeah. take a tour of DOC and it's functioning as a jail and a correctional facility. Majority of the people there haven't even been convicted of the crimes they're there for. It's a very intricate detail that we are all overlooking because that then leads to the corruption because it's overcrowded, okay. it's harder to check. And you are dealing with really inhumane commit, uh, conditions. There's not a lot of um, programs for rehabilitation. So people are like a lot of the spaces that were meant for drug rehabilitation, spaces mm -hmm. that were meant for programs to help these guys out are used for housing because right, it's so right, overcrowded. Right, yeah. So so on one hand, yes, regionally, we need to put our heads together to say, why are so many people from our region in this one facility? But we don't just move the facility, we break apart the issue, right? Mm -hmm. We need to I think there are we other need... issues that if we're going to get together regionally, like I'm pretty sure there are other issues and you know, besides a prison, right? That we Absolutely. Can get, we can get. And you know, uh, and I do see Senator Will Castro, uh, you know, he goes to Saipan a lot. Uh, I didn't mean that to sound like he, <laughs> he goes to Saipan a lot. He never once brought me ice cake. Okay. <laughs> no, but I see him, you know, uh, I, I feel like he supports the reunification of the Marianas, but you really touched on a good point is that um, together we're strong, you know what I mean? And, and uh, maybe Senator Will needs to continue uh, looking out, you know, thinking outside the box and finding ways that, you know, despite our different uh, statuses, that you know we can work together on issues that are, yeah, uh, and present a unified front. I mean, you know, it's one thing to send uh, our non-voting delegate to mm -hmm. D.C. or you know the governor or a couple senators to D.C. But what if you know it wasn't just us? It was Rhoda. It was Saipan. It was, yeah, you know, strength in numbers. Islands, right? Yeah. yeah. No, and I think that's what I liked about Will. He's He's thinking of ideas that not uh, and thinking about issues that not other senators are are thinking about. Right. I, I, I think he's looking into the books and in the history because back in the '60s there was a movement to try to reunify the Mariana Islands. However, it didn't go through. As a matter of fact, from what I understand and from what I read, the CNMI was actually all for it. It was Guam. Guam had to vote into it, but. They have the external factors being all these business people coming in and saying no because this and that. And then you have the animosity on the war. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And that's that's partly the reason why the that's changing, though, I feel. Yeah. I, and I think yeah. it is changing and everything. And if anything, Will's on the right track to try to, you know, probably even do it now because, you know, the sentiments are, you know, are, are different now. I, mean, I feel like he's, he's there's a strength in being from the islands, yeah. you know, being Chamorro, period. Right. And I, I, I like that he does those kind of things, but at the same time, I really want to see his um, his compassion, his conviction, because I feel like a lot of times he's speaking in sound bites. And yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to know more about education as an economic driver. Right. So that is a really important idea and reframing education and how we're learning and even rethinking like, you know, the charter school situation because you know, it's true, like with charter schools that are more targeted at certain, you know, like either trades or 
cultural revitalization or immersion programs, there can be possibility for economic revival, but none of that really came out. It was just a soundbite. And so that was something that I wished he had actually gone into a lot more. And he had a few opportunities to do that. So, I mean, that's just something I'd like to ask him the yeah, next time I, I think I think Will was a soundbite guy and Will Parkinson was in your face. <laughs> yeah, let's, I'm let's, let's, let let's you talk know. about Will Parkinson <laughs> yeah. and how you yeah. thought he did tonight. Let's start with you, Doc. Thoughts and prayers. I'd like to ask Eddie Bazacalvo to please spare us from another election in which cannabis is argued. Please resubmit your bill. Joey, Big John, Paul Calvo, please talk to Eddie and convince him to resubmit his bill to legalize cannabis for personal use. Save us all. Please. Well, you have a, you know, you'll probably have a champion if, if the governor does that with Will Parkinson. Right. <laughs> I've heard it for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't really, it, the enthusiasm is there, but. Didn't tickle your Where's mind. the beef? Right. Where's, yeah. the, beef? where's the buds? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, Will Parkinson, my opinion, I, I, I've met him a couple times. I mean, uh, about a month ago, I was at the Guam Election Commission. He picked up his packet, and he was, you know, Birkenstocks, uh, long hair. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like he's in it to win it. I mean, he mm -hmm. cleaned up, mm -hmm. and um, he talks a, a, a good game. He's yeah. almost like the progressive uh, Bernie Sanders, yeah. uh, Will Castro. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know and he, I mean? and he has got, a little bit of his dad, too. As well. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and he, which is okay. Yeah. 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 And he's going to play off that, I think. But... Uh, he was saying things that were unabashedly progressive and left wing, which mm -hmm. is something I think that, you know, I don't like it when candidates try and come to the middle. I mean, if you are what you are. If, yeah. you know, you're a radical left wing, uh, you know, borderline socialist person, then, hey, just yeah, and you didn't get be that around the bush. Where you didn't he's get that really going to get in mm -hmm. is how he presents himself to all the pocket meetings. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and if he's consistent and he doesn't go overboard, you know, with his movements and, and mm, what yeah, have you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you win. I, I lost by 200 votes, two, yeah. two or 300 votes in 2002. I voted for you. And it was, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> to this day, I still get a Kmart and people say, I voted for you twice, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I think, well, Will, you're on, yeah, I mean, you, both of you hit it right. Uh, he changed his image because I, I saw him too as well. He had long right. hair. Really looked like a stoner, you know, but uh, again, he changed up, he cleaned up, and he's, he's talking the talk and he's walking the walk. I, I, yeah, if anything, just after watching this tonight, um, because, you know, it's always a high by shake hand here and there with him and me, I actually got to know a little bit more about him, where he stands, what he's all about, and his convictions. And that is what you need in yeah. this race. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a different contrast from the other Will. Yeah. where he was almost scripted and everything. And you don't know, yeah. like, he just wants to make everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. being in the middle, like you said. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But take the focus off the candidates to the people. The people need to do their homework. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. in this island where they're voting for families mm -hmm. or, or family orientation or what have, it, mm -hmm. what have you. The people need to do their homework and to find out where these people stand and, mm -hmm. and what have you. I, I, I totally agree choice. with you. I, totally I also agree. think that... When I, when I vote, I go through all the women first. I think we should be giving women a more better chance yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to run the government. Look what mm -hmm. men have done to this. <laughs> look what men have done to this planet. Mm. Yeah. Look what m men have done to the United States. Look what men have done to Guam. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for women taking a step up mm -hmm. and speaking their peace. I'm going from there. You know, with that said, I'll tell you this much. <laughs> You're right on this part because you got to look at this. Okay, with the exception of Lieutenant Governor uh, Ray Tenorio. And, I'm sorry. And, and, and also, <laughs> you apologize? <laughs> and, I'm sorry. And, and Governor Gutierrez. Those two I'm are sorry. the only ones that actually sat on the seat of being governor. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, you know, all the candidates running for governor are all going to be first time. Okay, first timers being in that, in, in that seat, whoever gets elected. Yeah. Then you got to think about the legislature and and uh, the, the you know how it's you know the 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 makeup of the legislature, being that 
uh, Mary Torres only has two terms under her belt. Right, right. And uh, all the incumbents that will be running this time has they're all one terms. Right. Everybody else is going to be new. So you're you're right. You got the people have to do their homework because you could have a new governor and a new legislature, and with this budget bill and everything that's coming to pass with this 160 million Trump tax cuts, mm -hmm. you got to look at the people that actually bring experience and you know not just for show and everything and right. I'm you know I have the biggest smiles you know and right. on the billboards and whatnot yeah. because I don't know if that's a good thing being a new legislature and new governor or it's a bad thing I mean it's it's an ingredient either or yeah it's either yeah. or and you know you got to trust you got to trust your gut and look at the people that have experience uh man, what about and, that Parkinson name man you talk about people who uh you know run with a name uh, mm -hmm. uh Jim Moylan was here on uh, Monday, talk mm -hmm. about the Moylan name. What about the Parkinson name? And you, you talk about Tanana, yeah. uh, people in our generation yeah. who remember uh, Will's dad, Don Parkinson. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that, that people are going to stop at on the ballot when they see that, that Parkinson right there? You know, okay, uh, I, I was heavily involved with uh, Selena Nelson's campaign last, last, last election. And how, you know, on, on the primary, uh, she came in introducing, you know, the family name. You know, you know where she come from. You know who her grandfather is, who her grandmother is, and everything. Then when I came in, I was like, okay, everybody knows the Nelson name. Right now, it's time to actually show who you are. Mm -hmm. So the dynamic of taking that away, and then the, you know, from the general, from after the primary to the general, we concentrated and we focused on Talina. you know, Talina, right. the teacher, Talina, the soldier, right. Talina, the yeah. one that gave up her job to run. You know, uh, you know, being a teacher and whatnot. You know, it, these are the things that you know. With Will, I, he should have been doing the whole dad thing. You know, now and then after that. But he, I guess he's doing it in reverse. He's showing it. You know, this is me, Will. Yeah. And my yeah, dad is yeah. Parkinson. Yeah. But I mean, that's a big name. And you know, when you bring up Talina, uh, she can afford to go out and and tell people about Talina because that Nelson name is yeah. so Lola strong. Cola, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like a keeper name. You know? yeah. I mean, Parkinson, I feel like the same thing. Uh, people are going to listen to him, and then they're going to be like, was your dad? Because that's what we're yeah. all wondering. Like, yeah. is he Don's nephew? Yeah. Is he, you know, Don's, <laughs> yeah. and he's Don's son. No, so. but the first time I met him, boom, I'm Will Parkinson. My dad is former speaker. <laughs> boom, I'm like, okay, yeah, there we go. Right. And it was, it was the way he was like, I'm yeah. number 17. My yeah. dad is former. But, right. but at the same time, I think, like, what I look for is who are these people? What are the issues they stand for? Because, mm -hmm. you know, because we are still emulating sort of the U.S. two-party system, which is all about these personalities, these candidates, yeah. we really lose the, the reality, which is, well, what issues do they stand for and how do we hold them yeah. accountable yeah. to them? When you're just so in the middle, there's not a lot of accountability because you're not saying this or you're not saying that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you're right. Will was very clear about what he stands for. Um, and he really made it obvious that he was going to fight for certain issues. Mm -hmm. And he did, his, his main issue is legalizing marijuana, but he did speak to other things and he like spoke to it. Lowering with, taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he was yeah. articulate lowering, about it. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But again, you need to be able, I mean, what I'm worried about with this new slew of candidates in general is a lot of them are career politicians who haven't really done much. A lot of them are very young. What have you done in the community? What other careers have you explored? What experience do you bring? Exactly. And and how can I count on you to solve some really big problems that are plaguing the island at the moment? And so that's something that all of them are going to have to rise above is are you, you know, was your goal in life to be a senator or mm -hmm. is this something you're doing because you so, did something else? Or in the realize? perennial or the proverbial, my dad was a senator. So right. So therefore, um, yeah, therefore but I, I, I felt like you. with Will, it wasn't really about that. No. I, I feel yeah. like. He's throwing that my dad is, yeah. you know, but uh, I'm me on. and this is who yeah. I am. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's probably an evolution of his dad's ideas, mm. you know, kind mm. of, you know, tailor made to fit. Uh, real quick, which will uh, do you guys predict is going to make it into the uh, oh, uh, legislature? You know, I, being in the Republican Party, Will, I, it's almost a given, you know, and he is like, uh, he is, he is, from what I'm gathering, you know, the whole Republican Party is pretty much centering around because if they do maintain, I mean, if they do get the majority, rumor has it he's going to be the next speaker. That's so, crazy. Yeah, that yeah, crazy. yeah. And the, the Republicans, people talk about the Democrats being, uh, you know, factionalized. You have, you know, Mary Torres, she's on yeah. her side, and yeah. then you've got Will, who we assume is going to be leading the administration yeah. uh, candidates. Yeah. And, and 
Yeah, I, again, you know, I mean, it, 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 even with the BJ stepping down and everything, you know, you, you you have the standing rules in the legislature says in the absence of speaker, vice speaker takes it. But it's not absent anymore. It's vacant. So right. mm -hmm. the Democratic Party either has to appoint somebody or they have to go back into caucus. Yeah. And if the Democratic Party starts infighting as who who would want that position, then I don't know how that would, you know, you know, make could it be make some a, gavel grabbing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. a lot of right. grabbing. Apologize. <laughs> we apologize. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the Democratic Party would would come out and uh, you know, I mean, my if I was a senator and mm -hmm. I was in sitting in the Democrats, I would probably give it to Tom Adams. Yeah. Right. Maybe and there's a, there's a strategy case. behind right. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's a lame duck uh, senator. He's not running. Uh, you have a lame duck governor, and the budget's not done yet. You know, and he could be the worst nightmare for Eddie Cowboy. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Hey, uh, you know, uh, great set of candidates uh, tonight. You know, entertaining uh, both in what they said and what How they, they, looked, what they didn't hat. say in the hat. Right. <laughs> Bow tie. So, right. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Dombrowski, uh, closing thoughts? I agree with him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pendulum shift. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just like anything else. Mm -hmm. Victoria, yeah, so. closing? Uh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope that, you know, whoever runs and wins really does what's best for our island. Um, stick to the issues. When you do get in, start, uh, you know, lowering down the pride pretty much and uh, work with, you know, everybody, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, that will be my... Well, it shouldn't end after they get in. I think that's where the people need to get off the couch and stay involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what went wrong in the United States yeah. with the election of mm -hmm. uh, this individual we have as president <laughs> right now. Because I think we just got lazy. I yeah. think we just yeah. sat back and thought everything would be all right. And right. we got caught off guard. Yeah, yeah. the election yeah. shouldn't I be the finish line. What needs to be done on Guam after these guys are in is still stay involved with their offices, Absolutely. either via the phone or showing up at their offices and right. keep and the really pressure like, on them and keep the yeah. ideas floating. I think for me, actually, the, the real thing I would really want to leave is that, you know, we're not electing politicians. We're supposed to be electing leaders. Yeah. And we, exactly. we have a huge need for genuine leadership. And so, mm -hmm. They need to step up to the plate for that. And to make leaders, we have to be the ones shaping them, as Dr. Yeah. Dombrowski is saying. The we voters. have to steer yeah. them. Yeah. I, again, also to the voters out there, this is an important election because you really, really need to come out. I mean, I've heard a lot of talk about I'm not coming out to vote because, you know, there's too many gubernatorial teams. I'm just going to wait for the one. Mm -hmm. But you're not, you know, this this is not just about the gubernatorials. You have to think about the the leaders in the legislature, right. and it's very important for them to come out. If you don't want to vote for the governor, come out and vote for the senators. <laughs> Simple as that. Let's get yeah. out and vote. Uh, yeah. You know, really got to apologize, but uh, it's time for us uh, to go. All right. On behalf of our uh, panelists and uh, Sabrina, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, make sure to tune in next week, D18 tonight. Our guests are uh, Mary Torres, Amanda Shelton, and Janae Uggen. There you go. A couple of Republicans and a it's gonna be another good show. Democrat. Yeah, yeah it is. And we'll, we'll get back at you at who our panelists are going to be. It's in the works, okay? In the works. <laughs> and on behalf of us, Serena Salas, Matt Tanani, of course, Dr. Dombrowski. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan and uh, Victoria Lola. My name is Chris Barnett. Thanks for watching the D18 After Party. A staff and Joe.